Hello everyone and welcome back to Elden Ring. This is episode 4 of my playthrough. Last time I left you, I promised that we were going to do these gatefront ruins. And I've been working on this for about 2 or 3 hours. <laughs> I, I, I basically figured out a way to defeat this Godric Knight. And um, a lot of it involves stealth, as you'd expect, because I'm not at the level where... You know, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Also, you'll see in this footage that I'm showing you, I'm using stealth a lot and attacking them from behind just to gain the upper hand. This is a tactic that I, I encourage if you're a wizard or a mage starting out. I encourage you to do this. Um, and obviously, if you do get into trouble, what you can do is... It's a little cowardly, but you can run away and then, and then come back when they let the guard down. Um... That's just something that I would advise, because um, you, your character isn't based around brute strength, let's face it, and sword combat. Um, you know, it, it should be really a last resort. Um, the other thing is, um, what I haven't showed you in, in, in preface to this, I probably should have done, but <clears throat> you remember there was a, um, a moment in the uh, playthrough, we went to the Church of Ella, and we found a... Let me just check my notes here. I want to make sure that I get this right. Just while we're defeating these uh, bad guys. Um, yeah, so in the last episode, we talked to a merchant named Kale. And we showed you a transaction. We can buy stuff from him, stuff like that. I bought one or two cookbooks and it unlocked the ability to be able to craft items. I had to buy like a crafting pot and a crafting kit. But I found out you could get basically what is it, essentially, you could create these flame, like a flame pot. And what you can do is you can throw them like, I guess you would say a, a medieval type Molotov cocktail. Um, they're in like a little pot and you throw them and then they set whoever you throw on fire. And you'll see this at the end of this um, highlighted clips. You'll see when I, I eventually get around this encampment, you will see that I use these flame pots with the Godric Knight. One, because obviously I haven't got to the stage yet where I've done sorceries and incantations. You'll have to bear with me that this is all... Um, you know, I, I didn't play any of the earlier games that this, this developer made. I know that they were responsible for Dark Souls, but I never played any of those. These kind of games, when I was a teenager, I wasn't interested in them. I've got to be honest, but as I'm getting older, I'm starting to appreciate these games a whole lot more. Mainly for the storyline and maybe mainly for the longevity of it. Um, you know, I think if you're going to spend $70 upwards of a, the game, you want to get longevity out of it. Um, just pull you back quickly into the action here. You can see I attracted the attention of the Godric Knight as well as all his compatriots are running after me. So what I said before about, and here's another one to join the foray, I actually have to end up running out of this area, this play area, just to basically lose this unwanted attention. And again, I'm not going to stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe with them because I've lost before. Uh, this is about, you know, doing what's best for your character and, and trying to essentially play your way through so they've let the guard down they've gone back to their positions and now i'm just gonna basically assault them again with stealth and take each one down as we go um pulling it back around to what i was saying before is so we have now this ability to craft items from the the wilderness um one of them being this flame flame pot and you'll see when we encounter the Godric Knight, that we want to... One of the things as a mage and wizard, we want to try and keep our distance from that guy with the big spear. Um, he's, as, as as my friend would say, he's shish kebab does a few times. So we don't want to get into a big ding-dong with him because he's going he's gonna to beat us every day. And I'm yet to look into sorceries and incantations and how, how to actually do them. So, until I get to that stage, I've basically got to use whatever I can get my hands on. Um, and I do want, obviously, help and comments and feedback in helping me get better. I just don't want those comments to be spoilers because I'm still... This is me experiencing the game for the first time. And so, a lot of everything that I come across is brand new to me. Um... 
you can see here, I just did the whole, the old wait for him to swing his big hammer like this, and then come back in and get him, and then back away, let him swing his axe again. He gets me there, but then I get him back, and I take him down. Um, if they have low energy, low health, there's a time that I might stand my ground and try and sword battle them, but obviously it's not going to be my strength. Um, coming up soon, not this episode, but maybe in the next episode, I'm going to take a look at the baseline stats for the Astrologer and compare them with where I'm at right now. I believe that some of my stats are plus two or even plus three, I think, by now. So I have done some good work in farming some runes and, and getting my character to be better than what he started out. And I would like to obviously focus on, um, let's have a look at these here. Um, so I want to focus on both intelligence and mind because I feel like those are the two critical areas of the wizard that's going to come into play. And again, if, if you are further along, if you've already completed this, please feel free to leave me some advice. If you have any ideas on, you know, the way that you think I should go about building Shinnok, then please do leave me some comments as long as it doesn't include spoilers per se. Um, you can give advice as far as if there's like a merchant to go to or a way to get around a certain thing that you can give it uh, little hints to to help me. I would more than welcome stuff like that and discussion on the channel. Uh, obviously, my, my main channel focus has been predominantly sports games. Um, and, and at the moment, we're doing GT7 as well on the PlayStation 5. But this is a game that I've really gotten into and I've really started to plow some hours into. So if you guys have any feedback, any ideas, then please do ferry them my way. I need all the help I can get. So um, let's have a look. We are pretty much most of the way around this encampment now. Um, there's a couple of guards and sentries here. There's one or two. And then you've basically just got the three in the middle. So what I, I figured out was after... Like I said, a couple of hours of playing this. There's been plenty of times that I died at the hands of the Godric Knight. But I figured that if I go round the encampment and get the out outer guards first. And take them by stealth. Um, and use my wizardly ways. Then I can probably, you know, reduce this entire encampment down to just me and the Godric Knight. And then it's going to come down to what I can use at my disposal to take down him once he's on his own. Because if he's if he's with a, a bunch of guys, I realised, hey, I'm not that powerful yet. I can't just waltz into this encampment and just defeat everybody straight away. I'm not that powerful yet. So I just need to pick and choose how I approach my battles at this stage. You can see there's a guy there in the distance and one here coming with one of these lanterns, these torches. So we're just going to take him down first. Let him run at us. And I developed this um, this way where we can do like a critical hit with a lunge with the sword. Once they've already taken that initial hit, you do that critical hit. In, in some cases, I'll show you here in this next bit here, it actually stuns them from behind and then when you when they're stunned you can run up and, and hit, hit that final uh, finisher I guess if you like here he is so I think on the PlayStation it's R2 and it's like a the hard hard hit and then they go down on the knee and then bam boom and the reason why I prefer doing it that way you can you can stealth attack them and use the light attack and then stab them from behind but they actually go down and, and whether it's because my my character's not powerful enough, they end up getting back up after that 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 attack from behind. So it doesn't actually give you a chance to finish them off straight away. And you can sometimes miss them on the second strike. Whereas if you hard hit them from behind first, as they go down, you can then follow up with the R1 to finish them off. So that's why I prefer doing it that way. So, you'll see now that we've we've dealt with all the outer perimeter guards. It's just literally... Um, there's, a, there's a soldier sitting by the campfire over there. And then there's this guy here with the large... It's like a warning horn that they have. You'll see um, he's walking up the hill. There he is. So, you can see this warning horn. And when, when, when you start to attack, he, he 
takes out the horn and lets everybody know that there's an intruder. So we want to stop him from doing that. There's the first attack. And then we're going to stick the knife in. He's done. He's officially toast. That just leaves two. That's one guy by the campfire. And then the Godric Knight left to finish off. Like I said, this took some time playing and figuring out. But this is the way that I figured out to do it. I'm a relatively low... Uh, wizard. So he's seen me there, so I'm going to go round and surprise him again. It's another stealth attack. One of the ways that I crafted these flame pots, actually, just to go back to the flame pot, was um, with the smouldering butterfly. Um, and you can use... You can use the small... You can see them actually above this campfire, those little orange butterflies. If you collect them and collect mushrooms, you can craft one of the flaming pots, and they definitely help. Um, you know, until you're, you're at the point where you can do sorceries and incantations and stuff to make it easier. So that look, just leaves the Godric Knight. He's on his own now. And then what we're going to do, we're going to stealth attack this guy. And then we're going to do what we did before. We're going to run off and put some distance between us and the knight. There's the first one. It takes about four or five, I think, to do it. But we'll see here as we run off behind this big... It's like a big black chariot of some kind. There he is in the background. He's just got up saying, like, who did that? Like, what, what the hell... Somebody just attacked me from behind and now they've disappeared. Where have they gone? And so I'm going to run back now. He's gone back on sentry duty. I'm going to do the same thing. Just creep up behind him. Then this next hit should take him to about halfway. Yep, yeah, that was a good one. So he's down to halfway health now. I'm going to run back off up the hill. And again, put some distance between myself and the knight so that he can't see me and he goes back to his guard duty. I'll just cut this next bit out because there's a little bit of working out to do. And we're back. We're going to hit him again. This time, we don't get the strike. Instead, we only get a light strike, but it's enough. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some distance between us. I've got his attention. I've got him down to below half health. I'm going to use these flaming pots. Here we go. So you can see that those flaming pots have definitely had an impact on him. And now I'm feeling a bit more confident because I can get his energy down from distance. And I'm saying, you know what? Come on, let's have it. He's now down to a little bit, but I've got to respect him. Because he's got this giant spear and such a long reach. He doesn't have to be right next to you. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to back off a minute because he's already caught me a few times. Even though I'm confident, I'm not stupid. So I'm going to take another potion. I'm going to dodge out the way. Just bide me time, wait for the right attack. I'm just going to take one more slash and he's going to be done. It's his mistake to make. Here he comes. And I'll roll. And there's the hit. That's the hit that takes him down. And I've basically completed this area. I've, I've defeated all the enemies. Now, what we did get from this level, uh, we did pick up some Godric armor. And a lot of that armor I was selling to Calais back at the Church of Ella. And you get a lot of runes for that. You can see I've almost got 10,000 runes. And I've pumped all those runes into my character, as I said before. But I wanted to show you that. Now, the other thing is, in this episode... You remember the Groveside Cave I showed you guys? It was like a nice little hidey place over here in this uh, mountain area near the, near the castle. I've been using this as a save point, right? I didn't realise there's actually a, a turn down the corner here. And it actually leads off into this area. So I'm going to go and investigate it. See what is in here. And these wolves are here. So, these wolves are protecting something. So, we're going to take them down. 
I'm gonna need my shield. That's one down. That's another. Oh, that one's not going down so easily. He's actually taking more. Here he comes. Gonna need my sword if he gets too close. Here he comes again. Just maybe one more. Timing's got to be a bit better with these wolves. Because if they start to gang up on you as a pack, they can be trouble. Right, so that's them dealt with. Let's see what's down here. <laughs> any time that you collect golden runes, or any kind of runes on this game, by defeating enemies, you can help those runes, those runes can help level up your character. There's actually something down there on that body. Let's loot that body. There's a number of items down here we can pick up, actually. So the cave actually goes down there, but I don't want to go down there just yet. Cave moss. Now, that's probably used for crafting of some kind. I don't know what, but we'll pick that up. Jump down here, make sure there's no other beasts. Take this, what's this that he's got? Pillage remains. A cracked pot, that's another one. So those cracked pots are the things that we use to, to create those flaming uh, pots that we throw at the we, we threw at the Godric Knight. So if we collect some more mushrooms and more butterflies, we can make more of those. They definitely come in handy. More cave moss over here. Oh, there's another wolf here. Let's uh, just back off a minute. That's him dealt with. Thin beast bones. I think they're used to make bone arrows. Trying to get this one. That's that one dealt with. <laughs> Wasted a bit of... Uh, Magic there. There's nothing else down here. We just gotta collect what's left. What's this over in the corner? Keep my shield up just in case. I'm really on guard on this one because oh, a glowstone. Interesting. I wonder what that's for. If you know what the glowstone's for, let me know. I don't know what we use it for. A golden rune. I'll take that as well. That can help towards the building of my um, character. So I think that's everything. Just uh, make sure. I don't think we can go back up there anyway. So we have to go down here. There's another wolf over here. Take care of him. That's knocked him out. I think that's the last one. Or maybe there's a couple more down here. There's another cave opening here. Let's go through this. Nothing hiding in the shadows by the looks of it. Pick up some more cave moss. And we're going to go through this mist, I think. Let's just go back and make sure we've got everything. I'd hate to go through this bit and then find we can't come back and we have to, we've missed out on something. Yeah, so I picked up a glowstone there. If you guys know what the glowstone is for, then by all means leave me a comment. Let me know what I can use it for. Um, I'm sure it's probably for crafting or maybe boosts my stats or something if I use it. Maybe I can turn it into a medallion or something, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we can jump up there. Only one thing for it then is to go down the... Um Let's have a look in this. Yeah, I don't think we have it. Let's uh, go down here and see what's in this mist. Usually, the tutorial says that when you go through the mist, there's going to be a boss. So I'm guessing there's going to be a boss at the end of this. Let's go in and find out. See what we're up against. The Beast Man of Faramazula. Wow, look at the size of this guy. 
And he's got a massive... I don't know what that is. It's like a scythe. I wouldn't mind... Uh, if I beat this guy, I wouldn't mind taking his weapon. That's for sure. Look at the range he's got on it. Whoa, he's swinging that thing around. He is a madman. No wonder there's so many dead bodies in here. Whoa. Alright, so... We're going to have to try and hit him when he's... Standing prone. And not... There's one of those night guys there. Oh, he's just got me. That was a good hit. Took a big, big dose of energy off me as well. <laughs> so, we're going to go back in and hit him a few times. Oh, but he's got such a good reach with that. I think I've got a couple more. I haven't really got any left now. So, I'm wondering whether... You have to use your sword to defeat the wolves and use your magic on this guy. That's what it's looking like. Let's see how we do with the sword for now. We can always have another go. I've got a couple of hits in already. Not doing that much damage though, this sword to North Ernest. He's still swinging that thing around. Oh, he's got me again. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna beat me. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm knackered here. I barely took a, a wink off him, really, with the sword. So I think if we have another go at this, I think we're going to have to use the um, the magic. Defeat the wolves with the sword and then use the magic on him. Yeah, he's got me. Fair play. And he triumphs. You died. Yeah, no shit. We got messed up. We're going to have another go at this. We jump back in. Here we are, Grove Side Cave. And we'll run down and get rid of these uh, beastly wolves. And then we'll have another go at this guy using our magic this time. The um, Glintstone Arc is the one that we've got. That, that seems to be the best one because it's got the best range. The pebble is a little bit more direct. But if you miss with it, if they dodge it, then... You've kind of wasted the, the shot, so to speak. Whereas with the Glintstone Arc, you get a little bit more coverage. So, we're not going to use our magic here. We're going to use our sword. See if I can get their attention. I want to try and defeat one by one. I don't want the pack of them on me. Is this guy going to jump up? Yes, he is. That's good. That's good for us if we can just get one interested. Now he's jumped back down again. Idiot. Here he is. Sorry. Get him eliminated. So it's only taking two strikes on him. Oh. Just don't want to waste too much of my um, health battling these guys, knowing that I'm going to need it for the battle against the Beast Man. Get those big lunges in, try and get him down. There we go. That's that done. We don't need to be worried about those beast bones for now. And we've collected everything that we usually do. There's nothing down there. Off we go. And we've got two to deal with in this um, little pond area. And again, two can surprise him. He hasn't seen us yet. Now he has. Go down, get a critical hit in. He's moved out the way. That's no good. I'm swinging like a madman here. Gonna have to be careful. Alright, that's them done. Why is he not going up there? Oh, I've gotta go this way. I've gotta go this way anyway. One more to do. That's that one taken out. So before we go in, let's just give ourselves a nice little tonic. Prepare ourselves. In we go. Right, beast man. Time for round two. I think I've got you. Well, that's taking way more off. Look at that. Alright, he's going to swing around. So we've just got to make sure we don't get hit by that big blade, that scythe. Oh, that's doing way more damage. I've already took way more off with this uh, glintstone arc. Do some more of that. He's got another bit done. And we actually have because 
we saved our um, flask of cerulean tears. We can actually use it. Oh, he just caught me with an absolute belter there. And now he's hunting me down. He's swinging again like a madman. We've got him down to about halfway though. That one missed. We've got to wait till it's the right moment. Way, dive out the way. Got it. Another good one there. If we can just avoid that massive scythe and swinging it round, we I think we can get a couple more hits on him. I think we're going to take this guy. Oh, that's another good one. Right, we're going to need to take some more tonic. And the Cerulean Tears, he's swinging that thing around. Just get a bit of distance. Oi! What an epic battle this is. These boss battles are actually kind of cool once you get used to them. Oh, he's almost gone. One more. Yay! Look at that. Yes! A flame drake talisman. What's that? Is that like a... A medal? I'm not sure what that is. Anyone know what a flame drake talisman is? I did actually, at the beginning, if you've not watched episode one, I did pick the amber medallion to wear around my neck to increase... Uh, health. Um, I don't know, I think... I don't know whether I can wear the talisman as well as the medallion, or I have to pick one or the other. I'll have to have a look at that. But we've defeated him. And just having a look round to see if there's anything else that I've missed. I don't think there is. I'm pretty sure we got everything. There's nothing over here that we can pick up. And these little campfires here are just fires. I don't think they're actually... There's anything we can do. We just pick up this cave moss. It could come in handy later if we have to create something. Or we could just sell it. You know, if, if uh, Calais interested. There's another cave moss over here. We'll pick those up. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I tried to include as much action as possible. We took all those guards and sentries down at the gate front ruins. And then um, we came into this cave, dealt with the wolves, and we've defeated a boss. This is the first time in, in the game that I've defeated a boss. So leave your comments, let me know what you think. Um, I'm hoping that each episode is going to include more action. We're going to return now to our resting place, our place of grace, I guess, if you like, the resting area. And when we come back in episode 5, one of the things I want to check out is the um, Aguil Lake. It's further down as you, when you first start the game, there's like a lake. And I guess we, we, we did actually go nearby, there was like the Dragon Burnt Ruins, when we were looking for the Stone Sword Key, I think in episode 1. Or episode 2, it might have been. So, I want to check that out. Um, and I also want to check out that big gate at the side of the uh, gate front ruins. I want to see what's through there and have a, a ponder through there. So we're going to be doing that in episode 5. If you enjoyed this episode, please slap a like on it. Let me know in the comments what you think so far. If there's anything I'm missing, if you'd like to see anything in these episodes, please give me a shout and let me know specifically what you want to see. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is our lad for Set Play Gaming. I'll see you guys on the channel real soon. I appreciate your support.